What's up fam? It's your boy Vinstrumentals here. Hope you're all doing great. Hope you're all staying safe. I've been wanting to make a new video for a while, but honestly, I hate making videos. I just spend way too much time with it. So I'm just gonna try something different today. Instead of doing all types of montages and studio shots and whatever, I'll just keep the camera rolling, chop it up in the NPC, make my beads, do what I do. In the meantime, I'll keep interacting with you guys and afterwards I'll explain what I did. This way I won't have to edit too much, I won't spend too much time on the video, I'll just take out the crap and it's ready to roll. Let me know if you like that format, that way it stays more natural. That's what I want to achieve actually. In music, you can overproduce something, you know what that is. So why do that with video editing? When I record music, I record my arrangements live. That way I can always keep the emotion and whatever I'm feeling when I'm making the music, that's captured in the recording. So why not do the same with the videos? The only thing I'll have to look out for is that I don't forget to change my battery. As I can see, I almost have to change it. So let's hope I won't erase anything. You know, I got this battery with this cable, it's USB, but uh, I tried to plug it in. It didn't work. My USB hub is not long enough and... Anyways, enough talking. Let's make some beats. Roll the intro. As I travel around the country As I travel around the country As I travel around the country As I travel Right, let's start the show. I'm gonna start with the drums, because drums matter. So, gonna check out some drum loops. chop up that one let's get to work let's start chopping ah uh, yeah some of these kicks sound super sweet uh, the only thing I'm gonna do to start with is mono the drums and I'm gonna use only the left side because you can't see it from here but I can see that the audio files on the left are much bigger. Probably also I can see the attack from the kicks. So I'm gonna take the left channel and mono it. Let's go. This is what we got. See what I mean? Those kicks, they were on the left. So let's chop this up. And start finding a little pitch. Let's go. Alright, that was fun. I ended up with a little drum kit. Deep kick. Snare. Some hi-hats. Now, let's see if we find some samples. Three days later. So I got this nice soulful record. I started chopping it up, but I cannot get past that one sample. Check it out.
Yeah, I can't get past that one. That's gonna be the one. You know, music is not only about what you hear, it's about how it makes you feel. Especially for me. And this one makes me feel, you know. As I travel around the country. Like that, you know. I made a drum program with only the sample. As I travel around the country. The delay you can hear, that's an effect from the outboard mixer, some internal effects. And uh, you probably noticed there's no bass in it, or I took out all of the low ends. I made this program. First thing I did is add the SP1200 output to give it some crunch, you know, I like that on samples. After that, I added the sidechain compressor. This one reacts to the kick. And then what I did is duplicate the same channel. Now I can process them both separately and send them to different channels on the outboard mixer. I'm gonna keep this one as is. So I added a high pass filter. I took some time looking for the right crossover frequency. And I boosted the low ends with the air enhancer. The air plugins, by the way, very nice plugins. These are the stock plugins from Pro Tools. And needless to say, they are very good. So I ended up with this. As I travel around the country. And like I said before, that delay comes from the outboard mixer. Next up, I'm gonna use the other program for the low end. So what I did here is boost the low end with the air enhancer. And I added the low pass filter Spend some time looking for the right cutoff frequency, which results into this. Now I can choose if I want to play them together or separately, which is pretty fun. As I travel around the country, as I travel around the country, around 63 BPM. Let's try that out. Let's record it. As I travel around the country, 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 as I travel around the country. I like where this is going. Simple but effective. You probably noticed I changed the snare. I had this one before. Now I got this one. Mm. Sounds better with the sample. So I use that one. Alright, now that I'm happy with what I've got, I'm gonna start sending everything over to the outboard mixer and do the mix then. We only have three stereo programs, so this is gonna go very fast. Let's go. Alright, I'm gonna take off some of the box emits. Find the right frequency on the kick and boost that up. much
Alright, so I took out some of the low mid frequencies, those that sounded boxy to me. I boosted up the kick and added a little bit of high end. After that I went to the compressor, SSL style compression, just a slight touch as we already compressed the drums in the MPC. So this is without. And with. Nothing too fancy, just focusing the drums a little bit more. I already EQ'd the samples and as you heard before I added some delay from the outboard mixer. So the only thing left to do here is record the track into the DAW. Alright, that's it. Recorded everything into the DAW. You probably saw me tweaking along the way. I was uh, setting up the compressor, the master bus compressor. I always try to record everything. Well, I do the sounds and the editing, the programming, everything is in the MPC as you saw. I try to mix down the sound in the outboard mixer. And when I'm happy about this sound, I record it into stems into the DAW. I have a template that's mapped to the outboard mixer, so I just have to press record and it will record everything in multi-track. That's how I make my stems. I try to make them sound as good as possible on the outboard mixer, then I record everything into the DAW. Once I have that, I have a complete project. You know, this, this is so much faster. I can make beats on an MPC 500, it will take me that amount of time because you have to do all these sub-menus, you have to do this and that, work with the shift. Sometimes he will double press the buttons because you know those old MPCs. This one, this allows me to make three beats in the time I make one or two on, on another machine. When I worked on the MPC 5000, I wanted to buy a 5000, but I got a good financial situation right after I decided to buy the 5000. And this one was, was, it was out less than a year, so I bought it. Uh, it's still my baby, my main machine. Along with this, these work together so well. The reason I do this is because I used to work on a smaller mixer with only a two track stereo out. Actually, it's right there next to the outboard mixer. I used to have a lot of different machines, so I had to record everything separately in a separate take. But as I said before, I like to record the moment. So I, I need everything simultaneously. This of course resulted into a lot of ideas that I never recorded, which is a shame. I tried to work out a system, I, I put some codes, but you know, after a while I, I kept learning and updating my system, so <laughs> I had no idea of what I was doing. So with this configuration, once I press record, everything is recorded into multiple stems. And it's also a great way to let those happy accidents occur. You know what I'm talking about. So that's it fam, I hope you enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe, let me know in the comments what you think about the video. Shout out to all my supporters, the instrumentals aka Always Cooking, signing off, peace!